now that we have a reasonable understanding of why austerity is very difficult. One, there probably isn't the political will to do it. And even more, it might drive Greece into a bigger recession. And we also understand why defaulting isn't an option for Greece. And we understand what, an, what an, a monetarily independent Greece would have done. We can now get a good sense of what Greece is likely to do outside any other intervention, outside any help from other Eurozone members. And in future videos, we'll talk about why other Eurozone members do have some incentive to try to stop Greece from doing what I'm about to articulate. So in an ideal world, Greece, if it had its own currency, would just print away and be able to inflate away its obligations. Also, if it had its own currency, and this is not necessarily a good thing to do because it will it'll undermine investor trust going forward, but even defaulting would be an option because they would still have access to their own currency, and then they could just keep printing and then lending to that government, and the government could continue to to pay the nominal obligations, but since they're getting inflated away, in real terms, they would become lower and lower. So what Greece, outside any out, you know, if it doesn't get any help from other Eurozone members, if it does not get bailed out in some way, what is likely to happen is that Greece, Greece leaves the Euro. Leaves, leaves the Euro. And the actual mechanics of that, and you know, it'll probably go back to a new form of the drachma. So it goes to it goes to the new form of the drachma. And the way that that would actually happen mechanically is that they would declare a banking holiday. And it sounds like a very nice thing, anything that has the word holiday in it. But a banking holiday is essentially all of the a forced shutdown of all of the banks for some period of time over which there is a transi over which they can transition into the new currency. And so entering into the bank holiday, the euro was the currency, and if you had uh, a, a, and the, the money that you had in your bank was denominated in euro. But exiting the banking holiday, the drachma will be the currency, and the money that you have in the bank will be the drachma. And what the government will essentially do is they'll set some type of conversion rate over that banking holiday. They'll maybe say every every one euro, every one euro you have is will be converted into one into one drachma. And then just the exchange markets will determine what the actual exchange between a euro and a drachma is going forward. And so then everyone would buy and sell in, in drachma. And, all, and the government would also say all of our obligations are now in drachma, which would essentially be a default. Because if they said, if they told to their debtors, if they told to our debt to their debtors that we no longer owe you, what was the number? We no longer you, longer owe you 356 billion euros, or actually closer to 400 billion, or whatever that number is. We no longer owe you 400 billion euros. So this would have been what it was before. They're now going to say, they're now going to say, we owe you 400 billion drachma. Drachma. Or they could even say we're only going to pay you 200 billion drachma or 100 billion drachma. But no matter what they say, even if they say they're going to owe you, give you a trillion drachma, that would still be a default on the debt because these debtors, in order to fulfill these obligations, they were expecting, they were expecting. I shouldn't have drawn a dollar sign right over here. They were expecting euro. And if you give them anything other than euros, if you give them strawberries or bananas or drachma, that is a default. So this, no matter how many drachmas they say they're going to give, this would this would constitute a default on their debt. But the Greek people could actually then move on with their life. because And there's all sorts of crazy things might happen. But at least now, the government would be able to print its own money, use that to buy government debt that could continue to fund that government spending and eventually inflate away its obligations. You could imagine, you could imagine a situation that right now, if let's say it's real GDP, and actually we can look at the actual number right up here. It's real. It's real GDP. Actually, it just has the growth right over here. So let me just. So if it's real GDP is 100, let's say it's 100, the equivalent of 100, we could say drachma, and that by just keep printing drachma, the actual productivity of the economy. Let's say it doesn't change. It actually might improve if. if money is just printed but you don't get to hyperinflation but let's say over the next 10 years that the 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 real gdp doesn't change but the nominal gdp due to inflation becomes over the next 10 years let's say it becomes 500 it becomes 500 drachma 
So prices in general, so inflation, inflation, you had 5x, you had 5x inflation. Things became worth five times as much. You pursue the same goods and services, they're now worth five times as much. But now, now that debt that you have, your taxes are going to grow with inflation because they're a percentage of your GDP. But your actual, your entitlement obligations, your debt obligations won't change. So in real terms, they'll be one fifth as much, which actually all of a sudden makes them sustainable. Now, as I said, this is not a simple thing to do and not a painless thing to do. And we haven't even started talking about the repercussions for the rest of Europe and why this might be scary and why this might make people suspicious of other countries like Spain and Italy and on and on and on. And even in Greece, this would be painful because you can imagine, you can imagine we're already starting to see this in May of 2012. A, the, the government will say every euro you have in your bank account, it'll now be a drachma. But the people there, they aren't, they know better than just believing that a drachma is going to be worth the same as a euro. They're going to know that as soon as the drachma starts exchanging on foreign exchange markets, that the actual reality is, the actual reality is one drachma one drachma is going to be some, worth something closer to maybe 60% uh, of a euro, 60 cents, or, or uh, uh, 0.6 of a euro, or 0.7 of a euro is equal to point, let's just say 0.7. Let's say it's 0.7 of a euro. So essentially, by this happening, everyone's savings, everyone's deposits in real terms, in terms of their global pine power, is going to go down by 30% overnight. And the Greek people are already seeing that. They are seeing the possibility of a banking holiday, a conversion to the drachma. And so that's why you have people waiting in line before this happens and trying to withdraw their euros. So you're starting to have, people are starting to withdraw withdraw their euros and if they have a Swiss bank account they can deposit it there or they might just take the euros and stash it in their mattresses and that by itself is a little bit scary the bank's deposits are depleted but remember they have a fractional reserve banking system they do not expect everyone to show up on one day and expect all of their deposits to be accessible so this is essentially going to lead to a run on banks a run on banks and you're already starting to see this you're already starting to see this in Greece, and it is actually rational behavior. If you think that 30% of your savings is about to be swiped away because of this thing right over here, I'm going to give you something worth 70.7 of a euro for every euro that you have, you would rationally go to the bank and, and get your deposit back. But because everyone is going to start doing that, the banks won't have their reserves. You don't have, the Greeks don't have their own central bank that can back up the banking system there. And so this might lead to massive bank failures massive, massive bank failures. And essentially, the entire Greek banking sector could go down because of this. And they don't have an independent central bank, independent of the European Central Bank, to kind of uh, fight the fires the way that the Fed would in the United States. So this is not a clean situation. It is not a painless situation. But outside any help, it seems like the only direction that really, or the only option Greece has at this point.